<laughs> Hi guys. Um, my name is Coro, or uh, my name is Justin Kaufman. Uh, all my friends call me Coro. I'm gonna take you guys through uh, uh, production techniques for uh, concepting out a uh, assault rifle. You know, if you want to work in this field, this is definitely something good to know. Now we're gonna go back into the the handle here. Look, it's still not right. Uh, but but this is again, this is a good thing to stress kind of the importance of of the fact that you know you know if you're doing a, a gun for a video game, I, I actually think the handle's one of the more important things you, you kind of need to pay attention to because um, it's closest to the camera. And I mean, you know, even in a case like this, you'll see when we go to a first person view that you you do actually see a good amount of the handle. It's it's some prime real estate, and you know a lot of times. You know, you, you'll see the hand on it, and you know you want to make sure that that hand isn't like mushed in like a little, little mutant hand or something. You know, I I have found that it, it is really like an undebatable fact that if you do a bunch of them, you, you're gonna find, you know, you're gonna end up with a better solution than the first one that you do. Usually, I'd say 90% of the time. Um, that is the value of working, like, from a draft view like this and keeping things simple and just working the big shapes. Okay, okay. Now I'm starting to feel a little better about these. This is the, this is kind of the fun part, and, you know, I, I can't lie, I do get a little caught up in it sometimes. This is where, you know, you have the design roughed in, you know, nothing's too concrete. But, you know, you can kind of very quickly just kind of glance over stuff and make sure, you know, the, the planes are reading correctly. So this is the point where we're going to uh, take our concept into 3D. And we're going to model out a, a rough block model. And we're going to do a series of renders that we can then take into Photoshop and composite together and... Uh, a little bit of paint, a little bit of spit shine, uh, come up with a nice comprehensive uh, concept. So this is where I'm, I'm just kind of taking the opportunity to restate the larger volumes, and, uh, you know, kind of enforce the uh, the hierarchy of form. You know, it, it, it's funny too because like. I'll do this sometimes where I'll, I'll put a layer down, you know, whether it's a multiply layer or an overlay layer, and I'll, I'll start erasing out of it like like I'm doing here, you know. In the in the end, it's it's like God. Sometimes you'll you'll erase out, you know, 80, 90 percent of what you put down, but it's uh, those little things, those little areas that that end up like kind of helping. You know, I I work in a lot of layers. Uh, I've found that's another kind of uh, that's a good tip for smart production is uh, work in layers because you know you never know what you're gonna have to go back and revise and fix whenever you're making any sort of rash decision or you know if you're experimenting if you're doing anything drastic make a new layer just do it on a separate layer here we go. I'm uh, I'm putting an overlay layer on. I'm uh, I'm bouncing that orange light down onto the top there. Ah, it's a nice little trick. Erase out, erase out. Yeah, anywhere I can bounce reflective light or anything like that off of, you know, that I can I kind of help force, you know, this thing along. 